G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a PPSH-41. This is a weapon of a Russian design back when they were communists, back when they were the Soviet Union, so, you know, it goes back a while, and was originally produced during 1941. The dead giveaway here is the number. Mm, that makes sense. And it's a somewhat customizable standalone submachine gun type weapon with custom sounds and animations. The caveat to the animations part is it still uses basic combat rifle animations in third person, which you can potentially exploit for reload speed, but it's a very bullet hosey weapon, so you wouldn't want to be like the Nazis during the Second World War on the receiving end of this, because it'll chop you up like Butcher Pete on Psycho Buff. Yeah, not very fun. Anyway, so the customization options are pretty good. We've got 101 damage right now. It is during the night, so we're getting a slight bonus. That should be mentioned. And the reload speed on this is kind of slow, but it's actually controlled by what receiver you put on it. So if we chuck on the rapid fire piercing quick reload receiver, that'll increase our reload speed as well as our rate of fire, our range, and our damage, which is very, very helpful indeed. And we'll chuck on a longer barrel to increase our range and accuracy even more. If you want to keep the aesthetics of this thing as it is like you know, the Red Army Senate issue would have it, really basic type weapon, but did well. And if you want to look, learn the history of this weapon, just watch... Um, Forgotten Weapons, he's done a video on it, and I found the I always find those videos very, very entertaining and interesting. I, I like history. History is very important. Anyways, so the advanced stock will give us superior recoil and better aim with scopes, and there is scopes with this thing, but they're kind of see-through. Most of the scopes uh, that are in this um, weapon uh, act like basic uh, see-through scopes. If you don't want these things, you want to retain it, you know, it's... World War II look, you can leave the iron sights on, you can chuck on reflex sights, it'll make it slightly better in bats, I suppose. It, the reticule on that is kind of interesting though, because it's like it's painted on, but it's not. It's very weird. Anyways, for the muzzle, you can chuck a suppressor or no muzzle, so we'll just check this one out with everything in the book and chuck the suppressor on it, getting ourselves 178 damage, which is extremely powerful when we combine it with that rate of fire there, and also the uh, mag capacity, because although this thing well, you've already seen it. We can't, since it did have a uh, box magazine back in the day, we can't actually equip it with that, which is a little bit of a shame, but whatever, you, whatever, right? And if you want to offset the damage penalties from very hard difficulty, you can do so here with this slider. Very nice slider. I encourage all people that are making gun mods to do that because it allows the um, player, the mod user, to tailor the game's difficulty to what they need. And maybe if they feel like it's too powerful, you could have like a reverse of this just a quick note. I know it's a pain in the ass to make, but, you know, ever more customization, it's all good. And a legendary effect slot is there. I'd like to chuck on some legendary effects, but I don't think this one will need it. I'll grab a couple more PPSSHs and PPSHs. That's hard to say fast. Alrighty, so here we are outside of Immersive Gunners Plaza. Here's the PPSH in first person. Note how you hold it on the magazine. Kind of interesting, when you aim down sights, you actually transition to holding it just under the barrel there, where the uh, grip is now, actually. There's a little bit of discrepancies between the, uh, the first and third person animations, but this is Vicky, by the way. She's wearing some tactical armor, and she's got some... Oakley Speed Dealers on. Rose Tinted, that's not a, a thing for nostalgia though, it's because her last name is Rose, and that's canon. Anyways, so here's the PPSH in first person. See, the reflex sight looks like it's kind of painted on. It's kind of weird. If we go ahead and look at the uh, different variants that I've crafted, or that I've console committed myself in, this is just the really basic one. This is the one with the um, ACOG sight. Remember, ACOG, and then this one has the hybrid sight. Now, I feel like they've gotten those things around the wrong way. The the zoom isn't really that much. I feel like it's just flavor which um, one you actually want. So make sure you figure out what you want. Generally, the reflex sight here it would be the better one because it's just it's sight housing. Won't get in the way all that much. But if you want to go like Ivan, you got to go... <laughs> you just go iron sights or just hip fire this thing, which you can totally do. Here's Immersive Gunners Plaza, plenty more gunner chumps for me to take out. So let us begin. Now we might get a little bit of a range penalty at this uh, this far back, but that'll be fine. Let's just hit him with the old 1, 2, 3, 4 punch. Good old 4.4 multipliers, actual multipliers going on here. Hit him for 1k damage. Hopefully we keep ourselves hidden behind this tree, but if push comes to shove, we'll charge in and, oh, we get ourselves a quick level up there. Cheeky level up. 
Thanks, Courtney Taylor. Very cool. And now we've got to run in a little bit. But since we're kind of outnumbered here, and as you can tell, that reload is slow, I've got to trick up my sleeve. And when we're aiming in third person, well, I can headshot. And although the DPS would on this thing, even with the very hard difficulty penalty, we'll just switch over now. A lot more faster just to slap a new mag in than it is to reload or slap a new weapon on. You see, Ivan, if you carry many guns, you do not need to reload as much. Let's grab our third one and keep on going. Now, one of these bastards has an AA-12. If it's you, you're getting some more hacked critical treatment. Come on. Now, I've noticed with this weapon, if you want to use the penetrator perk, it only seems to hit one of the bullets it's throwing, and I've completely whipped <laughs> a VAT critical before, so there might be some sort of weird stuff going on with the projectiles. Maybe it's just the way this thing fires, or how fast it fires, maybe, but yes, when you're up close and personal, feel free to spray them down. Now, you can hear from this bloke, this guy's actually got a PPSH, and they make a distinctive sound, which is helpful if not distracting, but um, you also probably notice if you've ever been on the receiving end of this, just like the Nazis, it'll take your health bar down pretty quickly. I think we've got to shoot through a road sign here. And yeah, only the first bullet of that critical actually made it when usually it's all three, so it doesn't have very good synergy with the uh, penetrator perk, which is either done for realism reasons, because it's only firing, again, those 7, 6, 2 by 25s, but, you know, I liked having... I think I'd like it better if I had all of the VAT synergies that I would usually have. You're dead. Let's see how that goes for you. Not very well. Aim high on these guys. Upper chest, you'll be laughing as they'll be dropping. And you've got a big old magazine, so there's no shame in just spraying and praying. Because eventually, you'll get them. And as for this person, you're getting a critical... Yeah, I couldn't be bothered to hear you scream in slow motion, so we'll just uh, finish you off like that and round the corner and Gunner Conscript goes down easily. And we don't have to even reload to commence this door breach maneuver. Nice. It's a little bit less cool than kicking down the door and mowing everyone down, but it's the closest we can get. Here's a bashing animation, by the way. It seems to be of the vanilla game because, as you can tell, after the animation's finished, you'll shift your hand back from the under the barrel to on the magazine, so... Yeah, they've, they've taken some shortcuts here in the animations, but I don't think it detracts from the experience at all. It's a very clever way of, um, you know, cutting some of the work stuff out. And now we're in Nerd Rage, Destroyer of Acadia is active. We'll use what bullets we have left here to kill the rest of them out of Nerd Rage now, but if we get shot more, we'll go straight back into it, which we should be now. There we go. Get this reload finished, and most uh, damage is active again. Good idea to stand still if you've got the rooted perk as well. Oops. Yeah, when you're descending like that, it's hard to aim. Uh, let's just get this guy with a critical. And your arm is the most visible thing to me. Oh, there's the old critical doing the weird thing again. Might... I don't think I've got something else that might bug that out. It just might be a, just a little bit of a bug with the weapon. Anyways, we're not actually done yet. Yeah, okay, I thought we would have been done at this point. I'm thinking what's going on here is all of these guys would be here. Yes, there you are. Well, I can tell Nerd Rage is active thanks to the damage jumping up. And what am I doing here? Ah, okay. I feel like I would have killed all of you guys by now. Okay, it's very disappointing that we didn't get those all of those bullets in in the critical. And this is going straight down to the wire, this one. I'm not leaving anything to chance, that's for sure. Alrighty. So this guy is up next. We don't actually have the AP to do this. So we'll just go ahead and mow him down like that. And this guy... There we go. We actually managed to nail him with all three shots of that critical. So there's just something a little bit off about this weapon, but... You won't notice most of the time because there's not a time in the vanilla game where you'll be fighting this much enemies. Um, obviously, if you're in a giant battle at the end of the game, everything's all nice and squishy not to make it 
not hard for the player at all. And you know what? That gunner can be left to rebuild his great faction that I have just wiped from the face of the earth. Just kidding. Good shot. Alrighty, let's reload all of my weapons and we'll move on. Righto, time to fight the OG Wendigo, and he's gotten himself a few friends of the insect variety, so we'll just throw some bullets down range, and if we hit something, great! If we don't, well, there's another 60 or so that we can utilize in its place. Well, he just ran into a mine, what an idiot. And let's get some concentrated fire action happening here, regain some of our VATS criticals that we've all expended. Very nice. And with the, um... DPS of this thing, with the Stealth Commando multipliers, and the staggering, absolutely no problem at all. Damn, I'm getting this, uh, I don't like this Milurk, he's going down, but I'm getting a lot of, um, good procs of Idiot Savant lately. Rip Wendigo, the OG one, before Fallout 76 was a thing, you see. He's like, halfway to becoming a Colossus, he just needs to, you know, grow a couple more limbs and a couple more heads. During the Second World War, a lot of the fighting took place inside buildings in, you know, densely packed urban areas where a PPSH would be very advantageous to the user because of its f high rate of fire and magazine capacity. So we're gonna go lack the reds, I guess, and go loud and proud and hungry, I guess, and, uh, just shred stuff at close range. This is just the one with the, um, the upgrade receiver, obviously, and just a reflex sight and nothing on the barrel attachments. So we'll have to go nice and close to our enemies to utilize the damage. Although, without the suppressor giving us that penalty, I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. Now, when you aim down sights, a little bit of drift, and if you want to control that, just simply burst fire, like that. But it's a little bit more than what you usually expect out of vanilla weapons, so unless you get super good at actually controlling this and it, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to use. It seems to pull to the uh, the right a little bit there, so let's keep that in mind as we're taking on our enemies. Me, you really? Who's saying that? It sounded like he was right around the corner. The big old mag on this thing, and whoops, we've entered a reload here. Well, we might as well use that. You get a critical, mate. There we go. Managed to hit all three just now. Ha! Ah, not even the bullet sponge super mutant warlords can stand up to a mag. I mean, it does take a full mag dump, but at this stage of the game, 45s are kind of easy to find because you're just going to pick them up every, everywhere, basically. Especially on Triggerman. Just pick up their submachine guns. You can grab 50 at a time. Very easy to get ammo in this game, that's for sure. Uh, let's wait her a little bit closer. I feel like with this thing's unpredictable recoil patterns and it's decently... it's They're not great sights to be honest, but just basically run up close and personal. Treat this thing like a shotgun that only fires one projectile at a time and you'll be right. This thing can shred these guys pretty easy. Is that a super mutant skirmisher? Yeah, no problems there. Oh, that one's got a gas rifle. Which gas rifle is it? It is a plasma infused. That's cool. And there's not much else. We'll see if we can finish off the rest of these rad roaches and doggos um, before we move on with just this mag. Where's that? Alright, looks like we're done now. Okay, one zinger box later. Let's go one last fight, shall we? There's the lobster man, the crazed miler hunter. Well, honestly, I've already had my zingers. I'm not really interested in eating seafood, so we'll just shoot him a little bit and see how we go. Oh, so far so good. We'll get ourselves detected in a second. And, ooh, okay. So, the amount of bullets that we are firing at this guy and the ammo capacity means... We get staggers very frequently. What that means is we can co just totally disarm the threat. Now, again, we won't any ever see anything this powerful in a vanilla game, but, you know, if you want to put your weapons to the test, sometimes you got to bend the rules or make new ones. There we go. He's hit the mutation station already. Let's go ahead and hit him with another five hits. Could use a critical here and there, but it just slows you down most of the time, so 
We'll keep on going. In fact, let's switch over to the reflex one because if we want to aim down sights, kind of don't want to have this giant scope in my way. So far, whatever has been able to spin at us, we've been uh, dodging quite easily. And normally with weapons like these, I kind of have to use sneak criticals just to cheese it all. But it appears in this case that we've got the DPS to actually do really well. Now, I'm pretty sure the Mysterious Stranger does, what, 900 damage all the time? That hit actually did get me because I was stuck in the Mysterious Stranger uh, vision. You can't cancel that out, so that one's on you, Mysterious Stranger. Although it must be said, um, if you take note of how many bullets that I had um, prior to starting shooting stuff, it goes through them very quickly, so make sure you are aware of that. There we go. Down you go, mate. Alrighty, so <laughs> one bullet sponge bites the dust later and it's fine. It's it's perfect this way. If I wanted to cheese that with a stealth boy and snoot criticals, I could have done that. But to draw it out means that, well, I can prove the point that this thing is...